Hello everyone. Uh, in a previous video, we talked about kinematics of a rigid body. We showed that the velocity is omega cross r. And in a scalar form, v is simply r omega. So the linear velocity, angular velocity are related by the radius. The acceleration at two components, alpha cross r plus omega cross omega cross r. So we are talking about cross products, so the order of the vectors are, are important. So alpha cross r is not the same as r cross alpha, so you need to pay attention to the order. Also for, we, we call this component tangential component and we call this component normal component. So in a scalar form, would be r alpha and a n would be r omega squared. And the direction would be the opposite direction of r. One application of kinematics of rigid bodies is gears. We use gears to transmit motion from one object to another one. So if we have two gears in contact, I'm gonna call one of them a and b. So a, gear a and gear b. If gear A is rotating clockwise with angular velocity of omega A, gear B will rotate counterclockwise, the opposite direction, omega B. To prove that the direction would be the opposite, I'm gonna draw a gear with one tooth and then another gear also with one tooth for simplicity. If this one is rotating, if this one is coming here, this is gonna push this gear to rotate in the opposite direction. So whenever two gears are in contact, the direction are gonna be the opposite. Here we have two angular velocities. We wanna know the relationship between the two angular velocity. To find that relation, we know that the velocity at the point of contact, let's call it VC, velocity of contact, is the same for each gear because there is no slipping. The velocity has to be the same. So whether we find velocity based on the information of gear A or based on the information of gear B, the velocity at the point of contact is the same. So these two are the same that we can conclude that omega B over omega A would be R A over R B, which means that the angular velocities are inversely proportional to the radius of the gears. Using acceleration, we can make a similar conclusion about angular acceleration. Alpha B over alpha A is R A over R B. These are two important gear ratio equations. This relation indicates that the smaller gear rotates faster and the larger gear rotates slower. So if R B is larger, as you can see in the, in the picture, then the denominator is larger, so omega B is smaller. The larger gear rotates slower and the smaller gear rotates faster. If the motion comes into gear A and goes to gear B, which means that we are reducing the speed. So it's a reduction system. So now we talked about speeds, the velocities. Now we can talk about the torque as well. The other, that's the other component of interest. So gear A, when it's moving clockwise, is gonna apply a force F, then there would be a reaction to that force. It would be the same, so I, that's why I call both of them F. So to find the torque, torque is just the force times the moment arm. So TA would be force F, RA, and TB equals force, which is the same, RB. The force is the same. So if I rearrange the equation based on the force, I have TA over RA. And here I have TB over RB. So I can conclude that TB over TA is RB over RA. You can see the torques are proportional to the radius. So that's very important. Here they were inversely proportional. I have BA. BA, here is BB. 
So that means that the larger gear carries the larger torque. So when you are moving from a small gear to a big gear, you are decreasing the speed, but you are increasing the torque. In gear system, you always have that trade-off between speed and torque. Are you planning to increase the speed or decreasing the speed? In most gear trains or gear box, we are interested to increase the torque and the trade-off is the speed. So if, you are, if the engine is directly connected to your uh, wheels in, in an automobile, you're in gear four or gear five, and we use other gears, we use the gear box to reduce the speed and increase the torque. Uh, sometimes there are more than one gear in, in contact and then we call those gear train. Let's say we have a gear here. And I'm gonna show the rotation here by this arrow, which means that the gear is rotating in that direction. And then this one is in contact with another gear. And this one is the input. And this one would be the driver. This one would be the driven gear. So the terminology is important, driver driven. And this one is connected to an intermediate shaft. Then this one is gonna have another gear system. So if the rotation is, the arrow is going up, the opposite would be the, the driven gear. That's similar. And that would be our output. So we might have more than one gear and then we call this a gear train. This one, the input can be connected to an electric motor. It could connect it to internal combustion engine. And in most cases, then we are using a gear train or a gear box. We are interested to decrease the speed. So we usually go from small gear to a large gear, a small gear to a large gear to, in, to decrease the speed and increase the torque. Let's name these, let's say this is Gear D has a angular velocity of omega D, gear C, gear B, and gear A. In a gear train, we are interested to find the output over input. The output is omega A, and the, up, the, the input is omega A, and the output is omega D. So we are interested in finding omega D over omega A. To find that, we can use the gear ratio. Omega D over omega A would be first this, two gears are in mesh, so omega D over omega C. And then here again, omega A over omega B. <clears throat> so we know the ratio of om omegas and they are inversely proportional to the radius. So I can write this in terms of radius. So omega D over omega A. And then I have omega D means RC, RD. I just flipped the, the indices because they are inversely proportional. So D over C would be C over D. And here would be A over B. So these gears that are in the numerator are the drivers. A and C, and in the denominator there are the driven ones. So let's look at the direction of rotation as well. This one is rotating counterclockwise if you look at it from the left side, and then this would be clockwise. They are on the same shaft, gear B and gear C. So the arrows would be the same, and then here would be the opposite. So whenever the two gears are in mesh, the direction would be the opposite. And uh, so now that we, we know that with one, we have one set of gear, the direction changes, then another set of gear, then the direction changes again. So the two, the input and output are in the same direction. If you have more than two sets of gear, the equation is the same. So we can generalize that equation, call it omega D over omega A. And the numerator would be the product of driving gears radius or diameter really doesn't matter because it's a fraction, so they cancel out. So let's write diameters. And then here, product of 
driven gear diameters and if we want to find a sign as well that would be negative one to the power of n which n would be the number of gear gears in mesh number of gear sets probably it's better to say gear sets in mesh if you have one set negative one to the power of one would be negative one means the direction changes but if you have more than one set let's say here for our example that we have two sets one set two sets so negative one to the power of two would be one so the direction doesn't change the input and output this is a powerful equation for having multiple gear uh, system. Pro product means multiplying all the diameters or radius. So here is a driver. This gear is driving that gear, and then it drives the shaft. Then here is in contact, and gear C is the driver, and then this one would be the driven. So the driver gears, and then the driven gears would be uh, here. We use the gear ratio for for solving problem. Now, similar to the gear ratio, we can write a ratio for the pulleys as well. So if you have a pulley system that the two gears are connected by the rope or the two pulleys are connected by the rope, the velocity here and the velocity here has to be the same if the rope is not slipping. So the velocity here, whatever we call it, VC and VC would be the same. So here we call it A, pulley A, pulley B. So the same story is true for here as well. R A, <clears throat> omega A is equal to R B, omega B. Therefore, omega B over omega A would be R A over R B. So the gear ratio and pulley ratio are, are the same thing. That's it for this video.